It's only when you know something about a profession, I think, that you're timid or careful. I thought you could do anything with a camera that the eye could do or the imagination could do. And if you come up from the bottom in the film business, you're taught all the things that the cameraman doesn't want to attempt for fear he will be criticized for having failed. Yes. And in this case, I had a cameraman who didn't care if he was criticized if he failed, and I didn't know that there were things you couldn't do. So I, anything I could think up in my dreams, I attempted to photograph. That was Orson Welles in a 1960s interview discussing the cinematography of Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is hailed by many as the best movie ever made, but it was not always received that way. When the movie was first made, the producers at RKO Studio tried to have the film destroyed because they hated it so much. And believe me, they were not alone. I used to be in that boat as well. That was a clip from my high school cinema class project. Much like the producers at RKO, it was clear that I didn't like the film back then either. But I think that's because I didn't understand what went into this film. I didn't understand what made it unique. I didn't understand the cinematography. And that is what I would like to talk to you about today. Citizen Kane told the story of an aging press tycoon whose arrogance had alienated him from everyone who loved him, and he had died alone in his lonely castle in Florida. In the early part of the film, his parents are discussing the terms of his adoption. Let's see how blocking and the use of the deep focus shot help to convey the dynamics of this scene. The shot opens on the young Charles Kane playing outside. As the camera pans in, Kane is framed in the window. This illustrates how he's the subject of the conversation that is about to ensue. On the right side of the window is Mr. Thatcher, the man who will be adopting Kane, and Kane's mother on the left side. As the camera moves through the scene, Kane's mother is always kept in focus and is the largest figure in the shot. This is to show that she has the most sway over what is about to occur. That is, she has the most control and she has already made up her mind. This is also clear by the look on her face. It's cold and expressionless. Mr. Thatcher is placed in the midground. This is the show that he has the second most control in the scene. Finally, Kane's father is placed far in the background. This is to show how unimportant what he says is. This is also clear by the way Kane's mother cuts him off. Throughout the scene, there's the use of the deep focus shot, which makes the scene seem lifelike how the human eye could perceive it. Let's hope it's all for the best. It is. While this is just one of the many scenes that I could talk about with this film, there are so many details that go into it alone. And there are so many more scenes just like this. I think with everything, we need to be like Orson Welles. Not afraid to innovate, because we never know what might happen. My name is Joseph Smith, and as always, thanks for watching.